you're watching Writing Your First Cloud Formation Template in AWS. My name is Michael Shee from the Cloud Training Institute and I'll be your instructor for the course. I love writing templates and scripts and hopefully you do too. But if not, by the end of this course I can hopefully convince you that writing scripts and templates, specifically in AWS, can not only be a lot of fun, in the long run it can also save you a lot of time and money. So with that, let's get started. What is CloudFormation? Well, AWS CloudFormation enables you to create and provision AWS infrastructure deployments predictably and repeatedly and enables you to use a template file to create and delete a collection of resources together as a single unit, which is referred to as a stack. Okay, well that's all well and good, but um, why, why use it? Why use a CloudFormation template? Okay, well there's a few reasons. Um, for instance, you might want to simplify your infrastructure management, which sounds like a great idea. As an example of that, if you have a scalable web application that also includes a lot of resources, such as an auto scaling group, an elastic load balancer, and an Amazon relational database service, all these tasks can add complexity and time before you even get your application up and running. So instead of that, you can create or modify an existing AWS CloudFormation template, which will describe all of these resources and their properties, and all you need to do is run the template to launch this infrastructure or any other infrastructure that you want. Another great thing that can do, it can quickly replicate your infrastructure. So as an example of that, let's say your application requires additional availability. You might replicate it in multiple regions, so that if one region becomes unavailable, your users can still use your application in other regions. The challenge in replicating your application is that it also requires you to replicate your resources. However, when you use an AWS Cloud Formation template, you can reuse the template to set up your resources consistently and repeatedly. Just describe your resources once and then provision the same resources over and over in multiple regions. You can also easily control and track changes to your infrastructure. In some cases you might have underlying resources that you want to upgrade incrementally. When you provision your infrastructure with AWS CloudFormation, the AWS CloudFormation template describes exactly what resources are provisioned and their settings. And because these templates are text files, you simply track differences in your templates to track changes to your infrastructure similar to the way developers control revisions to source code. And in the long run, all this helps you save time and money. Okay, now that we know CloudFormation helps us save time and money, let's go through some CloudFormation template basics and what the main things to keep in mind are when you're building a template. Well, first up, a CloudFormation template is a JSON formatted text file that describes your AWS infrastructure. And templates can include several major sections, those being format version, which specifies the AWS CloudFormation template version that the template conforms to, a description, which is a text string that describes a template, metadata, which are JSON objects that provide additional information about the template. You also have parameters, which specify the values that you can pass into your template at runtime. Mappings, a mapping of your keys and associated values that you can use to specify conditional parameter values, similar to a lookup table. We also have conditions which defines conditions that control whether certain resources are created or whether certain resource properties are assigned a value during stack creation or update. You have outputs, describes the values that are returned whenever you view your stack's properties. And finally, we have resources. 
Now resources is the only section that is required. All the other sections are optional. And resources specify the stack resources and their properties, such as an Elastic Compute Cloud instance or an Amazon Simple Storage Service Bucket. Now this is the section we're going to concentrate on and write a template that only uses this section, that is the resources section. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a really simple template. So for this exercise, assuming that for some of you this is probably your first template, I'll try and keep it as simple as possible and only use the bare minimum to get our template to run successfully. From what we've seen in this last slide, we know that we must include a resources section at the very least. So what will a template look like with only the resources section in it? Well, it'll look pretty simple and something like this with the only things that we need to input are the name of your bucket and the resources type. The resource type identifies the type of resource that you are declaring for example, an EC2 instance, but in our example we're going to use the resource type AWS S3 bucket. And if you hadn't guessed it already, we are going to create a new S3 bucket with our template. Okay, let's look at some values that we can populate it with. So for the name of your bucket, I've chosen this value, your bucket 129974AXZ. Now remember, bucket names are unique, so if you're going to run your own script or your own CloudFormation template, you have to use another value for your bucket. And the resource type. As stated before, we're going to use AWS S3 bucket. And take a note of the syntax of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and populate the template and see what it looks like after we populate it with our values. Okay, that's it. As you can see, we have the resources, the name of the bucket, and the type of the re resource, which is an AWS S3 bucket. Is that it? Yep, that's all that's needed. Okay, now what? Alright, so what you want to do now is save the file, and give it a name, and save it with an extension type. Now this is a JSON t file, but saving it with the extension .txt is going to be sufficient for this exercise. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the AWS console and run the script that you've saved and see what happens. So here we are at our AWS console and all you need to do is click on CloudFormation under Management Tools, then create a stack and we're going to upload a template to Amazon S3, the one that we've written before and saved as a text file. So we click Upload a Template to Amazon S3, choose the file. Now I've saved it as a text file and I've called mine my first bucket and all you do is open that click next give your stack a name now this one doesn't have to be unique because it's not a bucket my stack one now tags are important to keep track of your resources, so it's probably a good practice to give this at least a name, so you know what it is. Let's call it my first bucket. There's some advanced settings that we're not going to pay much attention to in this example, just to keep it simple, but you could send an SNS notification if you wanted to, but let's not do that. Okay, and then finally, 
you get to the last screen and we click on create and away it goes as you can see there's a create in progress uh, this one shouldn't take too long but some of these cloud formation templates can take quite a while so it's best sometimes just to let them run for 10 minutes and go away and do something else you can have a, a look around at, at, at a few things resources there's a create in progress for our resource there's nothing in parameters tags that's the name we set for the tag we shouldn't have a policy because we didn't set one okay I think I'm just going to go away and wait and uh, come back when that create in progress is finished okay we're back again and our stacks finished completing and as you can see the top stack my stack one has status create complete and if we look down below we can see an overview um, outputs we don't have any the resources that were used uh, was an s3 bucket as we know and one other thing I'd like to note is template you can actually see the template now that is the one that we made and saved as a text file so that should have created an S3 bucket let's go to our S3 bucket okay if we scroll down we can see the bucket that was created now it's called MyStack1 but CloudFormation has given it an additional parameters on the end of it um, I didn't realize it was going to do that so you do not when you create your template actually have to give it a unique name because CloudFormation will do that for you okay so that's our bucket look inside it there's nothing there but we haven't put anything in it and that's pretty much it so we've run our template in cloud formation and it created a bucket for us exactly what we wanted to do now of course we could have created the bucket straight through the console without going through all this but it was a great exercise to create a very very simple template to see how it works and in later lessons we will be creating much more complicated templates so here we are back at our presentation screen and we finished our demonstration so what have we learned well a few things as you've seen writing a cloud formation template isn't that difficult and only requires a few lines of code to get it working also, if you're writing your first CloudFormation template, try and keep it as simple as possible and only have the resources section. Obviously the template in our example was a very simple template and it would have been just as quick to have made the bucket by the console itself in S3. Hopefully, however, you can see the potential of using a CloudFormation template for simplifying infrastructure management, quickly replicating your infrastructure or easily controlling and tracking changes to your infrastructure. Also, keeping it simple the first time you write a template makes it less likely to fail and it's a great way to get started and get a feel for how to create and run a template without having to worry about too much else. And finally, I've hopefully shown how writing CloudFormation templates can be fun and I encourage you to go out and play around and try and create a few more complex templates. So that's it for this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.